Today we're going to be talking about how to use Simpson's rule to find arc length of this function here, y equals the natural log of 1 plus x cubed. We've been told to use Simpson's rule with n equal to 10, and we've been told that the interval on which we're going to be finding arc length is the interval x greater than or equal to 0 and x less than or equal to 5. So we could use this formula here for L, this is our arc length formula, to find exact arc length, but in this particular case we've been asked to approximate it using Simpson's rule. So instead of using the arc length formula to find exact arc length, we're going to use the Simpson's rule formula to find an approximation of arc length. Now one thing we are going to need our arc length formula for is finding our function f of x. So the interesting thing about a problem like this is that when we use Simpson's rule, normally you plug in values x sub 0, x sub 1, x sub 2 into your function, and you might think that you would just plug them into the function here, y equals natural log of 1 plus x cubed, when in fact you actually need to find this value right here, because this value is what we're going to call f of x. It's the function that we're going to plug our values into. So we need to find out what this value is, and then we'll find our values of x sub 0, sub 1, sub 2, sub 3, and plug them into this function to find the approximation. So in order to find this function, the first thing we're going to need will basically work inside out. We'll need the derivative of our function y. We have dy over dx here, which is the derivative of our function y with respect to x. So we'll go ahead and we'll find the derivative, and then we'll build out this function here. So the derivative, which we'll call dy over dx, in order to find it, we'll need to use chain rule. If you remember, chain rule tells you to take the derivative of the outside function first, leaving the inside function completely alone, and then multiply by the derivative of the inside function. Well, in this case, our outside function is the natural log, ln, of this inside function here, 1 plus x cubed. So we're going to take the derivative of the outside function basically ignoring this inside function, so just pretend that it's a simple x and we have natural log of x, the derivative of ln of x would be 1 over x, so we're going to get 1 over the value of our x, our inside function, which is 1 plus x cubed, that's the derivative of the outside function, the natural log, but then we have to multiply this result here by the derivative of the inside function. The derivative of 1 plus x cubed would be 0, if we took it term by term, 0 plus 3x squared, which of course is just 3x squared. So we multiply here by 3x squared, and when we simplify, we just get 3x squared over 1 plus x cubed. This is our derivative function and the value that we can plug in for dy over dx. So now we just want to find, and essentially this is really easy at this point, we just take the square root of 1 plus, and now we get 3x squared over 1 plus x cubed squared, and this is our f of x value that we talked about. This is our function to which we're going to be plugging in values x sub 0, x sub 1, 2, 3, etc. So now that we know that this is our function, we can proceed to our Simpson's rule approximation. The next thing we need to do is figure out what our values of x sub 0, x sub 1, x sub 2 are going to be. Well, the way that we do that is with the interval that we've been given and the value of n that we've been given. So we know our interval is between 0 and 5. We're evaluating from 0 to 5, and we've been told to use 10 subintervals, basically 10 rectangles, to approximate the uh, arc length value. So what we're going to do is use these two to find delta x and use them to find all of our values of x sub 0, 1, 2, etc. So the way that we're going to do that, the way that we're going to find delta x, is we're going to take the upper value of the interval 5, we're going to subtract the lower value of the interval 0, and we're going to divide by n, which in our case is 10. Obviously here we just get 5 over 10, which is the same as 1 half. So our value of delta x is 1 half, so we're going to plug 1 half in here for delta x, and when we get 1 half over 3, that'll become 1 sixth out in front. Our values now of x sub 0, 1, 2, etc. are really easy, because all we do is we take the lower uh, limit of our 
interval, and we add delta x to it each time, and that'll tell us x sub 0, 1, etc. So x sub 0 is always the lower value of our interval, which in our case is 0. Now we just start adding delta x to get our values of x sub 1, 2, until we get to the upper value of our interval, 5. So for example, x sub 1 will be 1 half, and we'll just keep adding 1 half. x sub 2 will be 1, x sub 3 will be 3 halves, x sub 4 will be 2, x sub 5 will be 5 halves, and we'll keep doing this until we get to a value of 5, which should be x sub 10, because we've been told that n is equal to 10. So now you can see that we have all of our values from x sub 0 to x sub 10, which is perfect because we were told that n is equal to 10, and they step up in increments of 1 half, which is perfect because our delta x is equal to 1 half, so we need these half step increments until we get to x sub 10 equals 5, 5 being the upper value of our interval. So that's how we determine the values of x sub 0, 1, 2, etc., all the way to x sub 10. Now that we have these values and our delta x, we can go ahead and plug into our Simpson's rule formula to get an approximation for arc length. So what we'll do is we'll say s sub 10, meaning the Simpson's approximation with 10 sub intervals, is equal to delta x over 3, and our delta x is 1 half. 1 half divided by 3 is 1 sixth, so we'll get 1 sixth out in front, and now we're going to plug in our values of x sub 0, 1, 2, etc. With Simpson's rule, the trickiest part that we need to remember is that our end values, our values of x sub 0 and x sub 10 in our case, the first and last values, are not multiplied by anything. So essentially we have f of x sub 0, which is 0, and f of x sub 10, which is 5, so we'll get f of 0 and f of 5, those aren't multiplied by any constant coefficients. We're going to add those two together. Then after that, all of our odd values of x are going to be multiplied by 4. So x sub 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9 will be multiplied by 4. So we're going to get 4 times f of x sub 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9, so we'll get f of 1 half plus f of 3 halves plus f of 5 halves plus f of 7 halves plus f of 9 halves, and all of those are multiplied by 4 according to Simpson's rule formula. Then all of our even values of x are multiplied by Two. So we can multiply all these by 2, and that's going to be x sub 2, 4, 6, and 8. So that's going to be, in our case, f of 1, f of 2, f of 3, and f of 4. All of those are multiplied by 2. And so now at this point, and all of these are added together here. So at this point, essentially what we have is... A big arithmetic problem. So for f of 0, we're going to plug 0 into our function here f of x. So we would get for this f of 0 value, for example, we'd plug in 0 for x, we'd get 3 times 0 squared, which would be 0 on the top. Because we have 0 on the top of this fraction, the whole thing will be 0. 0 squared is 0. 1 plus 0 is just 1, and the square root of 1 is 1. So the value here becomes 1. For 5, f of 5, we'll plug 5 in. We'll get 5 squared, which is 25, times 3 is 75. In the denominator, we'll get 5 cubed, which is 125, plus 1 is 126. So we'll get 75 over 126. We'd square it, we'd add 1, and then we'd take the square root of what we got, and that would be the value we'd get for f of 5. And we just plug in every value that we have here, 1 half, 3 halves, 5 halves, 1, 2, 3, all of these. These ones we're going to multiply by 4, and these ones we're going to multiply by 2, and we're going to get a big addition problem inside of our brackets here. And then we just can't forget to divide it by 6, which we got out in front here. Once we do that, and we do that big arithmetic problem, and I'll let you guys do that, but we'll get an approximation of about 7.11 
8819, which is the approximate arc length of our original function, y equals the natural log of 1 plus x cubed. That's the arc length between 0 and 5 using Simpson's rule approximation with 10 subintervals, n equal to 10. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.